Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel for another Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 video. Today's video is very special, as a couple months back we took a look at all of the non-paid unlockable characters within the game, and today we will be having a look at the requirements to unlock all of the paid DLC characters and a brief walkthrough of those requirements so you can get a better expectation of what to look forward to as you seek to add these characters to your team. Now, before we really jump into anything today, do take a moment and check to see if you are subscribed to the channel. If you are not, I would invite you to take a moment and do so, as that subscription is free and easy, and I bring content to you on a daily basis from Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, as well as a couple of other games. And... Another important thing to note is that in order to reap the benefits of these characters, you do have to have purchased the DLC for this game. It's pretty inexpensive. I believe it was only $20 or $30, and you can actually access it here directly from the Nintendo eShop. Of Once you have made that purpose, purchase, you'll probably need to reload your game, but you will then gain access to this option up here at the top, which is Menu Select. Upon opening the menu select option, you will be able to cycle through the three available DLC packs that there are available. The first which was ever made available is the Curse of the Vampire, where you are able to unlock Punisher, Blade, Moon Knight, and Morbius in that order. And we will have a closer look at that in just a moment. The second DLC expansion that was made available was the Rise of the Phoenix, where you can unlock the four characters you see on your screen who are Iceman, Gambit, Cable, and Phoenix. And the third and final DLC which has been released is the Shadow of Doom DLC where you are able to unlock the four members of the Fantastic Four, that being Mr. Fantastic, Invisible Woman, Human Torch, and Thing. You can also unlock Doctor Doom and there is a sixth character that you can unlock given some of the updates that are made to the game with the Shadow of Doom DLC. But we will be having a look at him in just a couple of minutes after we go through every single one of the other characters that you can go through. So slap a like on this video if you are finding this con type of content helpful, as well as don't forget to leave a comment in the, d in the comments down below to let me know which of the DLC characters are your favorite. So without further ado, let's jump into the characters that you can unlock through the Curse of the Vampire DLC expansion. So the first character that you will obtain when working through the Curse of the Vampire expansion gauntlets is Punisher. And there is one other gauntlet that you will need to work through in order to unlock the gauntlet where you can obtain Punisher but he will be found within the Immortal War Gauntlet, which has four different stages. The first stage is fairly straightforward, where EX abilities and synergies deal extra damage, and all you need to do is defeat Bullseye, and that's a very simple fight, as it's identical to one of the previous fights, or the previous fight you'll be familiar with by playing through the standard storyline. The second leg of this gauntlet is the... Uh, criteria of defeating 200 enemies, which is fairly straightforward. Uh, you do have the benefit of your EX attack doing more damage, but you can only use one EX, or one EX attack in the course of the entire fight. Your EX attack will not recharge. That being said, it does not have a detriment to any of the other attacks, so you can work through that one just fine. The third leg of the gauntlet will have you facing off against Electra, where again you will deal increased EX damage, but the EX gauge does not recharge. Additionally, your health will slowly drop over the course of this fight, but you can heal some of that damage back by attacking into Grunts or the main boss. And upon using synergies and abilities, you're really not going to have any problem in keeping your health up in this section of the fight. Upon defeating Electra, you gain access to the fourth and final leg of this gauntlet, where you will need to defeat Dr. Octopus, Kingpin, and Punisher. And that is the order that they will appear in. And upon defeating Punisher at the end of this gauntlet, you will receive the character as an added playable character to your roster. 
and he isn't my favorite in terms of his utility, but he is quite a fun character to play, and I'm glad that he was included in this expansion. The second character that you will unlock when working through the Curse of the Vampire Gauntlets is Blade, and he's found within the Deadliest Prey Gauntlet. This, similar to the Punisher Gauntlet, has four different stages. The first stage will have you facing off against Kingpin, where abilities and synergies deal increased damage, but every other damage type does less. And since abilities and synergies are the best type of attack that you can use under regular circumstances, you can burn through this one really quickly, especially where you have increased regeneration of your energy as you take on these challenges. The second leg of the fight is a section where you will need to defeat 25 enemies where damage on both sides of the fight increases over time. And it is 25 enemies because the only enemies that spawn in are the Mighty Enemy class, which includes a couple of Ultron sentries, Mighty Outriders, and a few Sentinels that crop in every now and again. The Sentinels are quite nice because you can use their cores to your advantage upon taking them out. The third leg of this fight will have you defeating Ultron sentries, where again, friend and foe will deal increasing damage over time. And as you make your way through the first section of Avengers Tower, you will eventually come up to the living room area where you can then take on a bunch of Ultron sentries. There are 23 of them that spawn in, and upon defeating every last one of them, you will be able to progress to the final leg of this gauntlet. And in the final, fourth and final leg of the gauntlet, similar to uh, the previous section, you will need to work your way through the training facility, taking down different terminals. There are 60 seconds on the clock initially, but you can gain more time to that endeavor as you continue attacking into different enemies that are spawned in your path. As soon as you are able to deactivate these turrets, you will make your way over to the helipad, and instead of facing off against Ultron, you will be greeted by Blade. And upon taking him down, you will add him to your playable roster. The third gauntlet that you will need to work through in the Curse of the Vampire is the Blood Moon Rising gauntlet, where you will be able to unlock Moon Knight. Again, this one has four different sections that you will need to work through. The first leg of the gauntlet will involve you taking on Loki, with the added quirk of your EP, or your energy points slowly draining over the course of the fight with regaining an increased amount based off of damage dealt to different enemies. And that is a recurring theme across the different portions of this gauntlet. The second leg of the gauntlet will have you defeating 200 enemies in the area outside of the Xavier Mansion. And it has, again, the same quirk of your EP slowly draining, but it does spawn in a couple of sentinels every now and again, which can really help you taking out some of these characters, and there's quite a few EP restoring orbs that will drop over the course of this fight as well. Leg number three of this portion of the gauntlet is a area where you'll need to work through some of the floor puzzles in the Temple of the Shadow as you work your way over to the Electra fight. It is a little bit more difficult because you cannot just zip over the floor traps as easily as you normally would due to your EP draining and flying and web slinging other abilities do require the use of your EP to stay airborne. And in the fourth and final section of this gauntlet, you will be confronted by Nebula, then Ronan, and then Moon Knight. So in a similar format to what we've seen before, upon defeating Moon Knight at the end of this gauntlet, you will be able to add him to your roster as a playable character. Now, Moon Knight, he can be a little bit difficult to work with because he does walk his way around a couple of different places and can jump around and be a bit sporadic, but as soon as you predict his sequences, you can work through him pretty well. The fourth and final character that you can unlock through the Curse of the Vampire DLC is Morbius, and unlike his predecessors, he actually has a five-stage gauntlet that you will need to work through with a couple of additional quirks. The first quirk being that every now and then you will have different enemies that spawn in with different vampiric curse abilities. This first section of the gauntlet has you defeating 200 enemies with a couple of mini bosses showing up every now and again, and you will see the effects that are swirling around some of your opponents will have diverse abilities that you will need to be able to compensate for. The second leg of this gauntlet involves you fighting Electra, similar to what we saw 
in the Moon Knight Gauntlet just prior to this one, with the, again, difference in this section being that you will have a couple of enemies with a couple of new and different abilities from the vampiric curses that you'll need to compensate for or take into account. The third leg of this gauntlet involves you fighting Ultron, where your extreme attacks will deal more damage and every other damage type in the game is just simply less effective. And this can be a little bit frustrating because there are some opponents that you will be confronting that will heal members of the team and it's particularly troubling when trying to take on Ultron because, well, he's the one that you need to be focusing down and if he heals back up, that will further delay in your way getting through that. So just keep in mind that you may need to work through a couple of these enemies before taking on Ultron in that section. Section number four is fairly straightforward. It's the prison brawl out in the prison courtyard or th of the raft. And you do just need to keep an eye out for a couple of the infected inmates because they will be a little bit more difficult to work through. Some of them will actually respawn upon having their health bar depleted. Now the fifth and final section of this gauntlet involves a fight against Morbius. First you will need to take down the cursed enemies from either side of the map, after which Morbius himself will appear. This is a souped up version of Morbius. His attacks are fairly straightforward and similar to what he has access to in his standard kit. Just keep in mind that they will appear to be stronger here than what they otherwise would be when you would use them normally. But upon taking him out, similar to all the challenges before, you will gain him as a playable character to your team. Which brings us to the Rise of the Phoenix Gauntlet Trials and the characters you can unlock there. Now one big difference here is that these characters only have three stage gauntlets with the exception of the final character. And starting things off, we have Iceman. Now Iceman's first section of the gauntlet, you will need to take on Mystique and Juggernaut. And it's fairly easy because you can get the Sentry Core and throw that into whichever of the two characters you had remaining at the end of that fight. In the second phase of the Iceman warm-up cooldown gauntlet, you will need to take on Magneto, but you only have 120 seconds on the clock. Fortunately for you, you can increase the amount of time you have to complete this challenge by taking on different enemies in this portion of the gauntlet. The end goal is Magneto, and it is just him all on his own, so make sure you have enough time on the timer to take him on. Now, one thing you do need to keep in mind with these gauntlets within the Ride of the Phoenix is there are going to be a couple of danger room traps that will keep you on your toes and make things a little more difficult. These range from heat waves, cold waves, shock waves, and giant pistons that drop down from the ceiling, as well as a couple of others that we'll see later. But after working through those danger room traps and taking Iceman down, you will have him unlocked as a playable character and can add him to your team. You can then move into the second section of these gauntlets, which is the stacked deck, which of course gets you towards unlocking Gambit. The first leg of this fight has you facing off against Electra. There are only 30 seconds on the clock. That should be more than enough time, especially where you can, again, regain time to the timer by taking out different enemies and opponents that come into your path. The second leg of this gauntlet involves you taking on Bullseye and Claw. Bullseye will first run away into the second phase of the fight, and as he does so, the danger room trap that you'll need to keep an eye out for is a orb that ricochets back and forth across the arena and the room. Fortunately, your abilities and synergies do deal more damage, so you just need to get up close and personal with any of the opponents that you are seeking to take down, and with a couple of well-placed, even just standard ability attacks, you can work through that into the third and final section of the gauntlet, where you will need to take on Gambit. No real tricks for this one. There are a couple of uh, danger room traps you'll need to keep in mind, that being a heat wave and gravity surge pulse traps, but honestly, you can just focus immediately on Gambit and take him down pretty quickly in order to unlock him as a playable character. This brings us to the third character that you can unlock through these gauntlets, which is Fight for the Future and aptly applies to Cable. The first leg of this gauntlet will involve you taking on Nebula and Ronan in the Adalan Royal Hall. 
And the quirk of this fight is that your extreme attacks are the ones that are going to deal increased damage where every other damage type is menial at best. So make sure that you target your extreme attacks wisely as you employ them in this fight. The second phase of this gauntlet is a defeat all enemies section, which does even include the standard enemies that spawn in, but you will need to take on two boss type characters as well, that being Ultron and Maximus. So make sure that you've taken notes on how to face off against them, and make sure you track, uh, take out some of those traps in the room as well, as they are electrically charged, paralyzing waves. The third and final wave of this gauntlet is a face-off against Cable, and it is important to note that in this fight, Cable has souped up attacks that are far beyond what you can actually do once you have him as a playable character on your team. But he's fairly simple and straightforward as you take him on in this fight, and once you defeat him, he will be made available to you as a playable character. And that brings us to the fourth and final character of the Rise of the Phoenix DLC, which is Phoenix herself. And I think that this is my personal favorite gauntlet to work through because it calls back to the previous gauntlets you've done and the characters that you've unlocked. The one quirk that you do need to keep in mind with this fight is that you will have the aspect of the Phoenix buffs applied to all of the enemies you are facing off against which will soup up their attacks upon defeating one of these opponents you can then draw from the phoenix force and use it to your advantage you can do that in the first fight against iceman in the fight against gambit you don't have that luxury however because gambit is really the only character that you have to take on and you do want to make sure that you can wipe him out as quickly as possible in order to make sure that you can progress through, especially because there are a couple of enemies that come in here and deal excessive amounts of damage with their attacks, mainly some of the aim snipers. The third leg of this gauntlet is the fight against Cable, and the added benefit to this fight that I thought was really cool is when you reach the midway point, you will trigger a cutscene animation where Cyclops comes in, and Cyclops being Cable's dad, it's really kind of fun that they chose to include him as a portion of this fight. But Cyclops and Cable, they're really nothing too drastic, and upon taking them both out, you will unlock the fourth and final leg of this gauntlet, uh, where you meet the fire and the fury Phoenix herself. Now, Phoenix blitzes around the arena, also has the added benefit of the Phoenix Force, and the trap in this section that you need to keep in mind is more of a quirk that you need to take out swiftly, in order to gain access to actually combating against Phoenix because she will generate a force field and protect herself over the course of that fight. Now, the third and final section of the DLC, which is Shadow of Doom, it works a little bit different than the other DLCs in terms of the playable characters that you can unlock. This DLC has six characters that can be obtained rather than the four that we've seen previously. And the first four characters that you gain access to, you access all at the exact same time. So as you work your way through the storyline that is made available within the Shadow of Doom, you will be confronted by the members of the Fantastic Four. Uh, after being banished over to the negative zone by Dr. Doom, and Dr. Doom reclaims the Soul Stone for nefarious purposes that you will later find out. Upon arriving in the negative zone, there will be a cutscene and some dialogue. I highly advise you sit through it or watch through it if, if you haven't already. I've removed the audio from it just to make sure that I'm not running into any sort of copyright issues or infringements with that cutscene, but it's actually very well done and is quite a bit fun to watch and behold. So as you has, have these insectoid characters coming down off of the ridge up above, you start seeing the members of the Fantastic Four interacting one by one, starting with a project, uh, protective barrier that pops up around the members of our hero squad. They will then have a couple of boulders thrown at them or as the insects come down off of the cliff, followed by an extending punch, an arm, and a final Nova Blast before the insects retreat back off the cliff and you are greeted by the members of the Fantastic Four. They are introduced in the order of Thing, 
Johnny Storm or Human Torch, and then finally Reed Richards and Sue Storm, the Mr. Fantastic and Invisible Woman, respectively. And after you are treated to this cutscene, these characters are made available to you as playable characters. As you continue through the storyline, you will eventually come to the final fight against God Emperor Doom, and upon taking him on head-to-head -head and defeating him, you will be able to use Doctor Doom as a playable character. Now, this is a fairly straightforward fight on the mighty difficulty, but Doctor Doom is one of the most difficult characters in the game in terms of the boss fight in order to unlock him. And the first phase isn't really what's difficult, it's the second phase where he summons a couple of these holographic Avengers and then synergizes with them as he attacks you. As soon as you take him out on the mining difficulty, that's uh, easy enough, but in order to unlock the sixth and final character of the DLC, you will need to play through this storyline on the superior difficulty and then the newly unlocked ultimate difficulty as well. And as soon as you have taken on the ultimate difficulty and defeated Doctor Doom, which is no feat to sneeze at because this fight gets increasingly difficult and will certainly give you a run for your money, you will be able to unlock Thanos Infinite. And Thanos Infinite is an incredibly powerful character who has the power of the Infinity Gauntlet. Now, you don't gain access to every single attack that you see him use against you in the main story quest, but it's fairly similar and very powerful. And he will make a lot of the endgame content quite a bit of fun as you take it on and progress through it. It's a slog, it's difficult, but he is one of the most fun characters to use. But that's going to do it for today's video. Again, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more daily content as I bring videos to you every single day. Also, be sure to check out my description down below as I have a link to my Twitch channel. And later today, I will be attempting a world record run for this Marvel's Ultimate Alliance 3 game and hopefully claim one of the records for myself. I also do a couple of other streams every now and again, so make sure that you follow me over there for content related to that. But with that being said, thanks for watching, and I hope that you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day.